do? I am grown. And sometimes your mother is talking to you, your father is talking to you, and you will say, I know. And you still do the same thing that you want to do. Because in our heart and mind, we know that we are right. It is true that everybody is right on his own eyes. But as Brother Ronald says a while ago, there's only one truth. And you cannot pick and choose what is right and what is wrong. Because if we are really that cold, smart person, we remember what Solomon said. He said, go on, young man. Do what you gotta do. But remember this. In everything you do, judgment comes. That's why it is, we can say, our responsibility of your elders to tell you what the word is. Because we know that you cannot be convicted by our own words. We are just hoping and praying that the word of Father Yah convicts each and every one of us. Hallelujah. What way are we going to? And what decision shall we do in this lifetime? In Isaiah 66 verse 4, since you, young man, are doing the things that you want to do in your own thoughts, here's what Father Yah said in Isaiah 66 verse 4. I shall also choose their punishments and bring their fears on them. Because I called, but no one answered. I spoke, and they did not hear. And they did evil before my eyes, and choose what was displeasing to me. You know, I don't know how we are going to call ourselves if we are going to just, you know, think that you are in front of a judge and the judge is telling you all the things that you did against the law. What we are going to say then? Can we just say, because I'm just a sinner? Can we just say, because I'm just a human? Can we just say, because you made me like this? In the first place, who did the doing? And who did the choosing? Did you not remember what Father Yah said to Moshe? Before Moshe is going, you know, leave the earth. He said, I am offering you death or life. Moses said, choose life. Why you die, O Israel? Why we die, my brothers and sisters? You know, we are lucky if we reach 60. Luckier and blessed if we reach 70. Blessed if we reach 80. But we know nobody owns tomorrow. And yet, why we keep on doing the things that Father Yah disgust the things that we are doing? 
why we keep on doing evil before his eyes. And Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 13 Jeremiah 7.13 And now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but Father Yah said, now, because you have done all these works, what works is he talking? The things that we do because of our own thoughts, the things that we do evil in his eyes, the things that we do that displeases in this declares Father Yah, I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. I called you, but you did not answer. Now, do we have excuse? And can say to the judge that you did not hear him? The word says, I am rising up early and speaking to you, and yet you are not paying attention. Now imagine the Elohim who created everything rising up early just to talk to you. And we have the audacity to say, I'm okay, I don't need you for now. Isn't that what we are doing sometimes? Just like we can put Father Yah in a back burner and we say, Father Yah, just, just let me on with this. I will talk to you later. Isn't that what we are doing sometimes? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And that are, that's the reason why sometimes we are in our mess. I did. I told you my story. I was get, you know, fed up with my school in Glenox High School. I asked Father Yah for the last seven years and he's not talking to me. I thought he's not talking to me for the last seven years. Father Yah said, I want to get out of this school. And since as if Father Yah is not listening to me, you know what I did? I get out of my school thinking that it's time for me to, you know, transfer to another school. I resigned February of 2015, went to a charter school. I thought that it's better for me, but after two weeks, I walk out to my school and ready to go home in the Philippines. Why? Because I thought I am better off with my own decision. Not to mention that I will be in much trouble than when I was. Sometimes we decide that we think it is better for us to do something than wait for Father Yah. We know the story of Sarah. We forgot the word wait, and I say, wait. We forgot the word in Matthew that says, do and seek thy kingdom of Father Yah and his righteousness and all the things that you ask will be added unto you. Sometimes we forget that. And also we forget that all the blessings of Father Yah, He added no faith, nor sacrifices, nor sufferings. You know, sometimes we ask Father Yah for a job, and we thought that the job they are offering us is the job that Father Yah is giving us. So we grab the job, and all of a sudden, you are in a mess, and you say, 
I need to work during Saturdays, I need to work during the feast, because this is the job that Father Jack gave me, so probably he will understand. Do you think so? No. Or you are just the one talking and telling that what you want is just simply to do the job that you think Father Jack is giving you. Because I'm telling you right now, that's not the job that Father Jack gave you. You choose that. Because if you think that Father Yah is the one who gave you that job, then in the beginning, you should know that Father Yah will give you the provision not to work during Saturdays. Will give you the provision not to work during feast days. Will give you the provision not to transgress His laws. Because if it is from Him, it is a blessing to you. You don't need to sacrifice for anything to transgress His law. But we think we can just do like that because we thought it is from him. Can we not discern who is talking to us? Are we that so deaf and so forgetful that we forget the word of Apostle Saul that says, prove all things and prove every spirit. Because not all the spirit that's talking to you is his spirit. Most of the time, it's just you talking. Or just simply your wife talking. Or somebody else is talking. Because you have done this, as the word says in verse 13, I speak, but you did not hear. I called you, but you did not answer. I shall also do to this house, which is called by my name, and which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I did to Shiloh. Verse 15. I shall cast you out of my presence. I remember Pastor Wise said when he said, don't go in that place because you never know. Because Pastor Wise said, I did that. Did you know the agony of being cast out by the Father? When you feel just yourself and as if everything is against you and nobody that you can turn into? Don't be in that. I've never been in there yet. And I'm hoping and praying I will never be in that mess. Yeah. I will cast you out of my presence. As I have cast out all your brothers of the seed of Ephraim and you, Jeremiah, do not pray for these people nor lift up a cry for prayer for them. Why? No, make intercession to me, for I am not going to hear you, Jeremiah. Now imagine if Father Yao will tell me not to pray for anybody, or tell Brother Blackwell not to pray for everybody. Why? Because we are in our deep trouble of our life that we cannot discern that Father Yao is talking. And Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1. Hosea 11, 1 is what he said. When Israel was a child, I loved him. You know the reason? 